Anybody else? Okay, then uh, we will start on the agenda, and I'm going to make a motion to take uh, IR 1020 out of uh, order. 10, 10, 1022 out of order. Second by Legislator Karen Kappa. Okay. Uh, all, all in favor? Opposed? Abstention. Okay, on the uh, resolution 1022, a local law to prohibit the obstruction of county roads. Have a motion? Motion by Legislator Kara Kappa to approve. I'll second that. A motion to table by Legislator Estelle. I'll second that motion. A motion is second by Legislator Browning. Roll call on the motion. Speak on the motion. Okay, Legislator Mastow. Uh, my heart goes out to the people in the community. It is a real problem that will not be solved by this law. As I pointed out before, there are all, all, already penal law addressing this problem. I hope somehow the community and the different communities in Suffolk County and the people who are presenting or advocating for the day laborers will come together and find some way, a permanent solution. This law will only band-aid the, uh, the problem, pass over it, push it down to another road maybe. If it is even enforced or enforceable, uh, the last speaker who spoke, I think, said, uh, one of the speakers who spoke said that they have broken up a group of teenagers coming out of school when they're calling the police and why can't the police do the same thing? Well, the police have done, if the police can group, can uh, break up a group of teenagers coming out of school, it's because they are using laws that already exist. Why can't they do the same thing on Horse Block Road and North Ocean Avenue? In defense of something that has been said, I do not believe that there is a racist bone in Mr. Kyle Kappa of Mr. Eddington. I have known Joe for a long, long time, and I don't think he's a racist. He has never been. He's a good union person. He came from a union background. Mr. Eddington, the same way. I think he's a good social worker all of his life. I don't think he has a racist bone in his, in his body. So sometime to the fervor of advocating for our position, we say things that we don't mean, and we say things that, that, that are good. Example is me, last, 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 uh, last meeting. I don't think this body, all 18 of us, are acting on a racist basis. And that I really resent sometimes. The effect of the bill, as Dr. Venezuela said, the effect of the bill, not the bill itself, may become a racial issue because it will target one particular group, not the intention of the sponsors. For example, I don't think the, the, the bill will be enforced if a group of Boy Scouts gather around a block soliciting car to be washed for a fundraiser. They will impede traffic, they will slow down traffic, and they will be soliciting business but it will not be enforced against them because they're Boy Scout. I, will not, I do not believe that this bill will be enforced on union picketing. Though the employer may call the police department and say, I want to use that law, the police department have been allowed to do, will not enforce it probably against union. They have to. They have to, they have to. I know they have to, they will come, they will appreciate if you just listen. They will come. But the, the, the effect of the bill will be to target a particular group. The community is under siege. And that is the truth that we have to say. We have to say that the community of farming, especially, is under siege. And the quality of life has gone down to the point where most people would rather sell their house if they could find a buyer. Something has to be done. Something must be done. If the federal government is abdicating on its own, from it, uh, abdicating from this issue, we, as a county legislature, must take some action. 
but the action have to be balanced between two groups. The community, who is being assailed and attacked, and the daily boys who are trying to feed their families. Those are two issues that must come together and hopefully we can come up with a permanent solution. It is not going to be solved with laws that already exist in the book. I understand the position of the community. There is a, a theory in psychology. There are two branches of psychology. One is Freudian, one is called behavior, behavior modification. Freudian would say, let's look at the problem, let's get to the root of it and treat it until we find a solution for the problem. Behavior modification would say, let's remove the problem, then find the root cause and deal with that. The community wanted behavior modification. They want to find a quick solution and remove the problem. The day laborers advocate want to do a Freudian by treating the root cause first before we remove the problem. Somewhere in between those two theories, there must be, there must be a solution that we as legislators, men and women, of good conscience must come to a solution. And somebody gave me an example the other day. If you have a hammer in your hand, and that's what you have, then everything will look like a nail. So therefore, I'm saying, let's remove the hammer, let's find a solution. This bill would not do it. Thank you. It's Lynn Browning. Thank you. Uh, one of the reasons I would like to see this uh, bill tabled is because currently legislator Eddington and I are working on the problems of Woodside Avenue. Uh, Woodside Avenue is a death trap. Um, I believe at this time we have um, improved enforcement on Woodside Avenue to tackle the speeding problem. Um, when it comes to this particular corner, like uh, we've already heard, there are laws that are in effect, and maybe we need to step up enforcement on that particular corner. The one problem we have is these contractors who are pulling up. Those are the people who we need to target. We need to go after those illegal contractors. We need to go after those contractors who are pulling up on the side of the road, impeding traffic, and they're the ones who are causing a lot of the accidents. Uh, the other thing is, is, we do have signs that can be posted. They say no stopping or standing. Those signs maybe need to be posted. We don't need a bill to do that. And yeah, again, my concern is, is I have residents in my community who uh, through freedom of speech and the right to assemble have stood on the corner of County Roads to protest the saturation of the sex offenders in the sober homes. I'm not going to take it away from them. We have the right to life people who stand and protest outside Planned Parenthood. And my concern is we've had problems in Planned Parenthood where they've been targeted by radicals. Are we going to take away their right, no matter how you feel about the issues, are we taking away people's rights to freedom of speech and assembly? I grew up in a country where freedom of speech wasn't available. We couldn't do that. And if you assembled, you get shot at. So I'm not taking that away. All right. Well, we're certainly not taking that away, Legislator Browning. And um, you certainly didn't feel that way when you voted to ban certain populations from gathering in park areas just a few months ago. So um, again, consistency is the key here. And I think what Legislator Eddington and I are trying to do is solve a problem that's real. We're not trying to, um, and, and through that debate, um, it seems like people are blowing what we're trying to do so far out of proportion, which usually happens during this, this argument on, on this issue. The legislator, Mastal, I appreciate the work you said about Legislator Eddington and I, and you and I go way back, and then you know, with Maxine and everything. And you use the you use an analogy of Boy Scouts um, with a car wash. They would not be doing the car wash on a county sidewalk. They would not be stopping and washing cars on a county roadway. They would be in, they'd be in a parking lot somewhere. Um, they may be waving at people who come into their car wash, but they would not be doing it on the roadside, 
in the roadway. That is what is happening here. We have been cracking down on the contractors. We do, because we can. But there's been one element that we have not been able to touch, and I heard it. I heard you say it, because the cops have been afraid, politicians have been afraid, and that's been the person gathering, blocking access on the right-of-way and the county roadways. And that has got to stop. Yes, this bill is not the panacea. We all know that. And yes, it may be a quick remedy and not the root remedy legislative style, but it is a remedy. It's a start. It's something that's going to provide relief. It is truly going to provide better safety measures along a very dangerous county roadway. And it should be looked at for what it is and, and, for, and not for what it's not. And the, the arguments that have been brought up against the bill, quite frankly, though I appreciate them, um, it's not what the bill is about. And that's, that's just the bottom line. Thank you. Uh, Legislative Browning or Legislative Browning? Uh, yeah, briefly on the, um, when, you, when you're talking about the sex offender bill. Um, these sex offenders, these sex offenders are convicted felons. And they prey on our children. Pedophiles prey on children. They are convicted felons. These people that you're talking about have not yet been convicted of a crime. It isn't until we get there. Thank you. Legislator Lindsay. Um, yeah, I just want to take a few minutes and comment about the ongoing debate. I listened to all the speakers, or most of the speakers, and uh, the early part of the debate, I was in my office and I was listening to it over uh, the microphone. Um, and uh, it's kind of interesting, and a lot of it I can relate to myself and my own experiences in life. Um, I, my family moved to Suffolk County 30 years ago uh, from Nassau County, and one of the first houses we looked at was in Farmingville. It was a beautifully new, new house, and it boiled down to uh, that community or, or Islip, and truthfully we moved to Islip because the taxes were a little cheap. Uh, but what has happened to Farmingville is disturbing. Uh, I think anybody that would go down County Road 83 in the morning and see literally hundreds of people standing along the side of the road uh, makes you stop and notice what's going on here. Um, Mr. O'Neill uh, made some comments that I disagree with. And, some I agree with. I think he exaggerated a little bit about the effect of this bill uh, that it put our senior citizens in our economy. If anybody in their right mind thinks the passage of failure of this bill is going to affect much of anything, they're crazy. Because uh, it really isn't. Um, and I do agree with Mr. O'Neill in that our communities are part of the problem part of the problem because they hire these people. They hire contractors that employ people that aren't here legally. And uh, I try very hard not to do that. Any contractor that comes to my house, I specifically ask the contractor, do you have all legal workers? Because I think it's important. Um, I. My, my problem at this point with the bill has to do with the labor issues. Um, uh, when I was first approached by some of the unions about uh, could this be applied to labor disputes, um, you know, I had a discussion with our counsel. He assured me that, uh, that it couldn't be applied to labor disputes. Um, I had another discussion with him last night and he isn't quite as sure that it doesn't apply to labor disputes. I think everybody knows I was in the labor movement for many, many years. And uh, I know a little bit about labor history because I've studied it. Uh, about a hundred years ago, a law was passed on a federal level called the Sherman Antitrust Act. Uh, the purpose of it was to curb monopolies, curb big business that had dominated workers and consumers and it's just sucking the lifeblood out of, uh, out of the American way of life. And ironically, I don't know how much it affected the monopolies, but it, 
it's been used and still used to this day against worker organizations. And and that's that's upsetting. So I do not have a comfort level at this time until I get a definitive answer on on how this is going to affect labor unions. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to support the tabling this morning until I get a more clear-cut answer on this issue. Uh, as far as enforcement, I believe it's an enforcement issue as well. I, I really think that if uh, the powers to be want to enforce the statutes that are on the books, we could be doing it now. That's right. Um, I've probably been on more picket lines than anybody in this room. <laughs> Some of them we don't obstruct traffic. Once in a while we do obstruct traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it doesn't make any difference. Not so much in this county, but Nassau County, uh, I've had a couple of picket lines. The cops said, you got to disperse. And if you didn't disperse, they made you disperse. And on two occasions, they brought in the mounted police. If like, you want to see something scary, you go against the horse, uh, as I was there. So I'm going to ask my colleagues to, to back the tabling motion this morning uh, to give us a little bit more time to get a clear-cut answer on, on the labor dispute part of it. Okay, let's have a, a roll call vote on that. This is for tabling. Let's lose Eddington? No. Browning? Yes. Caracappa? No. Horsley? Lusquadro? No to table. McDowell? Yes. No way? No. Did I also lose it? Yes. Count? Three. So the, the motion fails. Okay. okay. Then uh, the motion to approve and a second by legislator Caracappa? And uh, we'll have a roll call on the motion. Let's say Zeddington? Yes. Browning? No. Caracappa? Yes. Horsley? The Squadro? Yes. Miss Bow? No. No. Is that anyone still losing? Yes. Four. Mm -hmm. Motion's approved. <laughs> okay, let's get to the rest of the agenda. Um, IR 2173, a local law establishing crime prevention requirements for scrap metal dealers. Uh, this, this needs to be tabled for public hearing, so I'll make a motion to table.